detective on views this, so he has a suspect that just shot somebody. Uh, he's pursuing him in his vehicle, um, and things can happen when you're doing that. Her life and death has been a headline. Apriana Harris is the 26-year-old pregnant woman who was shot in the head in Syracuse. Apriana, the mother, the sister, the aunt, um, who had dreams, um, she had a good heart. Twenty-six-year-old Apriana Harris was a free-spirited, creative, talented, enthusiastic, and vibrant young woman with a love for culinary arts and aspirations of becoming an actress. She had a heart of gold and always made it her duty to spread positivity amongst friends and family. Her greatest motivation in life were her children, who she loved unconditionally. Sadly, due to life challenges caused by childhood trauma, Apriana suffered from several mental health disorders and struggled with prescription medications and substance abuse. Apriana was nine months pregnant with a baby boy when a tragic incident would occur that would change her and her children's lives forever. Just after 9.30 a.m. on December 15th, Syracuse police responded to the 100 block of Dickerson Street near the rescue mission for reports of a shooting. Upon arrival, they would locate an unresponsive adult female along with a man running away from the crime scene. Syracuse police say a pregnant woman is in critical condition after being shot near the rescue mission on Dickerson Street in downtown. The police chief and the mayor speaking less than an hour ago. Our Ashley Kafaro is live with the breaking details. Yeah, Ryan, the scene here is still very active. Several blocks around the rescue mission have been blocked off with crime tape. And here's what we know right now. Chief Joe Cecil says around 930 this morning, a Syracuse police detective working overtime for the rescue mission actually witnessed a man shoot the pregnant woman. Now, as for the pregnant woman that was shot, all we know is that she was sent to an area hospital and is in critical condition. The victim was identified as 26-year-old Apriana Harris who was rushed to an upstate hospital and immediately placed on life support after suffering a gunshot wound to the head. According to Syracuse Police Chief Joe Cecil, an Onondaga County Sheriff's Office deputy was working overtime for the rescue mission and sitting inside of an unmarked vehicle when he witnessed the shooting. He would immediately notice a male fleeing the area, heading to the intersection of Clinton Street and West Onondaga Street, where he was apprehended before the deputy crashed his vehicle. The suspect was quickly identified as a homeless man, 34-year-old David Kirby III. A look into Kirby's past revealed that back in 2017, he was arrested for stabbing his sister and her boyfriend. And in October of 2023, Epriana accused Kirby of strangling her. However, if not for what is being called a paperwork snafu, Kirby may have been in jail during the time of the murder. Syracuse police were pursuing a felony charge for the October 2023 accusation, but when an arrest warrant was scanned and electronically delivered to the Onondaga County District Attorney for judicial review, the DA says it wasn't done properly. The scanned document cut off Kirby's name, and according to the DA's office, Epriana's story didn't articulate the charges. For both reasons, the documents were sent back to Syracuse police for correction. A spokesperson for Syracuse Police stated that there is no record of the document being rejected by the DA, contrary to what the DA said. And because the arrest warrant didn't go through, Kirby was never charged with the strangulation. The Onondaga County District Attorney made clear he doesn't believe the notion could have prevented the homicide and says the arrest warrant could have been denied or not carried out for other reasons. There's new information about the relationship between the 26-year-old pregnant woman who was killed near the rescue mission and the man who shot her. The district attorney says back in October, Epriona Harris accused 34-year-old David Kirby of strangling her. But when police asked the DA's office to approve an arrest warrant, something now described as a paperwork snafu paused the case. The DA says the document was not scanned properly by police and cut off the suspect's name. But police now say they weren't told anything was wrong with a scan. The DA says it wasn't malicious or negligent and doesn't believe it would have prevented last Friday's deadly shooting. On December 21st, six days after the shooting, an upstate hospital doctor successfully delivered Apriana's baby boy. Sadly, she was immediately taken off of life support and officially pronounced deceased. Onondaga County District Attorney 
Bill Fitzpatrick believes that Kirby is the child's father. However, a DNA test is still pending. In the meantime, Apriana's baby boy was taken into custody by Onondaga County Child Protective Services. Tomorrow morning, the woman who was shot in the head near the rescue mission in Syracuse last Friday will be taken off life support. At the hospital, her family will gather with medical staff for an honor walk as 26-year-old Apriana Harris donates organs to save the lives of others. After being shot, she delivered a healthy baby boy. Tonight, her sister and brother-in-law have some things they'd like you to know about Apriana. They believe her life is about more than the way she died. Until now, her life and death has been a headline. Apriana Harris is the 26-year-old pregnant woman who was shot in the head in Syracuse. Her family knows she's much more than that. So what is her headline? Apriana, the mother, the sister, the aunt, um, who had dreams and who also struggled with um, mental illness and substance abuse, but who was also very loving, always laughing, always trying to get someone to laugh. Um, she had a good heart. Her sister and brother-in-law, Alicia and Thomas Carter are grappling with the horrors that come when crime against a loved one becomes very public. They're taking comfort in memories from better times, when Apriana, mother of four, was a vital, helpful young woman who dreamed of becoming an actress and who made wonderful desserts, including peach cobbler, whose first love may very well have been high heel shoes. So when she was a teenager, she would come over to my house and try on all my shoes, and she wanted them. <laughs> when she had lots of heels herself, she was just getting into them, but high heels. She loved them. High heels. <laughs> yep. They think now of the successes she achieved and the struggles she endured. Apriana was always helping, but would also reject help sometimes. Childhood traumas took hold and couldn't be shaken. She lived with mental health disorders and struggled with substance abuse. The people out there who are shocked and horrified by this, but see elements of Apriana in a family member of theirs, what do you say to those families who are still fighting this fight every day to try to latch on and grab hold of that struggling loved one? What do you keep say to those trying, folks? Keep trying, keep um, trying. Just don't give up, you never know. Um, when they may accept your help. Or when you might strike a chord with them. Right. You know, never miss an opportunity. Never miss an opportunity. To be like, come home. Never. You keep know. calling. Keep asking. That's right. Keep seeking. Keep on. Yeah. Would that be a good legacy? for her in addition to her children would that be would that be good for you to know that someone hears that and and calls someone today yes 100%. absolutely you know um i think that if it helps one person that's something that's something Apriana's sister and brother-in-law say they don't know much about the man who's accused of shooting her. After she is taken off life support tomorrow morning, the charge against him will be elevated to murder. Prosecutors have said they believe she was trying to get away from him. And the family has started an online fundraiser to cover funeral expenses. A GoFundMe was created by her family to raise money for her unexpected funeral expenses. Kirby was originally charged with attempted murder and second-degree criminal possession of a weapon but his charges have since been upgraded to murder. He appeared in court on December 16th, where the judge set his cash bail at $500,000 and $1 million for his bail bond. He reappeared in court on December 21st for a preliminary hearing, and the motive for the shooting still remains unclear. The case remains ongoing. What we know right now, and we're still early in the investigation, at uh, 9.37 a.m. this morning, uh, a detective, uh, SPD detective working uh, overtime detail at the rescue mission along with the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office deputy. Uh, they work detail over there. He on viewed, which means he witnessed uh, a male, an adult male, shoot 
a female. Uh, the female is currently at area hospitals in critical condition. The male is in custody. Uh, the detective, after seeing this, witnessing this, pursued the, pursued the suspect in his vehicle. As you can see, the vehicle crashed into a tree up there, but he was able to apprehend the suspect. Um, and that's what we have so far. Do we know anything about the, the shooter or the victim or the people that were utilizing rescue mission services? No idea at this point. Yeah. It's just so early on. How close was it to the, to the rescue mission? It was in the 100 block of Dickerson. So. Okay. On what it's on what they would call their campus, so right. It was on their campus. Well, it's the, what they it's the hundred block of Dickerson, so. Okay, yeah. and the um to the detective and the sheriff's deputy were both working overtime for the rescue mission. Yes, the rec rescue mission hires both SPD and county sheriff to, to uh, work a detail over there. They have been doing that for several years. Okay, and um, how uh, at, at what time was the suspect apprehended? Um, I don't know the exact time he was apprehended, but a very short period of time because the uh, detective witnessed it, pursued him with his vehicle, and uh, caught him, you know, moments later. Do you know if the um, suspect and the woman were related? Don't know anything uh, don't know like anything that. About any no, it's anything. just early on. Anything about their ages? Any, at least an estimation to say whether or not they were teenage, children, adults? Yeah, so we've been burned by that before. I don't want to really say ages because we make mistakes until we're really able to confirm the identification and the age. I don't want to mention it. Were they in uniform, the detective and the um, sheriff's deputy? Were they injured? No, in no, in uniform. Uh, they are in uniform when they're down there. Um, most times, there are times when that detail is unmarked. I don't know uh, at this point, standing in front of you. I believe he was in uniform, but I don't know for sure. The, uh, the woman who was hit, I know that you said that she's been taken to the hospital. Do you know where on her body she was hit and how many times? Yeah, I'd rather not say at this point until we uh, finish the investor further into the investigation. And how long is this going to be blocked off for? It's going to be a considerable amount of time. Again, it's a, it's a, it's an investigation with a critical indiv individual. Um, we also have, you know, the situation with the vehicle. So it's going to be a while. Matt Malinowski, Lieutenant Malinowski, can certainly give you a better idea of how long it's going to be so you can let the public know. But they should know it's going to be a considerable amount of time, a couple hours at least, if not more. Is the female expected to survive? She's in critical condition? No idea. Critical is just that. We don't know. Yep. Um, th so the, that vehicle there, the detective was driving that vehicle or the suspect fled in that? Matt, come here for a sec. The, detec uh, the, te oh, the detective was driving the vehicle. He was driving the vehicle, and the uh, suspect the sh was running, or on foot, or yeah. The, so the suspect okay, was sorry. on. Yeah, so the suspect was on foot, and okay. I apologize if Matt, could you come here for a sec? Yeah. So uh, the detective in plain clothes. I just want to get this clear. I know we're still probably live here. In plain clothes or uniformed, or and in that car, which yep. so he's unmarked. Yep. And in is he in uniform? Do you know? Uh, not sure what his uniform okay. capacity was. But so yes, so the mayor corrected that. It is. It was. It's the unmarked vehicle that's over there. But the detective was in that car. Yes. Okay. Did he like hit him? We're investigating everything. Oh, every okay. possibility. I just was wondering how he. I was just wondering how he stopped him. Yep. Yeah, we're investigating every possibility. Yes. But the suspect was on foot, and suspect was fle fled on foot. Okay. Yes. Does he have any injuries? He's up at a hospital now being checked out, but as far as we know, there's no, nothing visible, no visible injury to the suspect. And um, the female, she's at Upstate, you said? I didn't mention the hospital. Oh, uh, okay. Just area hospital. Just the area, oh, yeah. sorry, area yeah. hospital, okay. Um, that, do we know anything about how it ended in such a way that the detective's car struck a tree hard enough for it to fall over? Well, again, the, the detective on views this, so he has a suspect that just shot somebody. Uh, he's pursuing him in his vehicle, um, and things can happen when you're doing that. But he was able to apprehend the suspect, who is now in custody, um, so it's a good outcome as far as that goes. And the detective, was he hurt? Not that I'm aware of. Are you, are you saying who he was? Uh, that, uh, we could say it uh, eventually, but not right this second. Okay. Um, so on the scanner, it came across that she was shot in the head? Yeah, I'd really rather not go into where she was shot at this point. Okay. Um, we have further details on that later today. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And was the detective already in, he got into his car, right, when he witnessed the, the shooting, and then that's when he went after the suspect, he correct? Did. He, he pursued the uh, suspect 
in his vehicle. Okay, yeah. so he was in his vehicle the whole time? Well, not, he on viewed it. Well, I don't know if he was in the vehicle when he saw it. Uh, they usually typically get out, they walk around, they engage with people when they're working this detail. So, um, okay. but he did, in, he did, uh, in fact, pursue the, the suspect uh, in his vehicle, and the suspect was on foot. Okay. When you say on views it, that means he saw it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just. Yeah, it does. Um, because in a way, we've by nature of the business, if we see you, it's generally for something bad, uh, to, to put it lightly. Do you have any concerns about how often you've had to come to scenes like this in December when typically shootings happen in the summer more often? Well, I don't know if it's typical anymore, Connor. Um, we've seen some very high um, homicide rates in January. Uh, we had Brexy Alley shot in January. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not regulated to the month anymore or warm weather. Um, we've had some high Decembers in the past, um, so it's, it's just not... Uh, um, it, you just can't tell anymore. Were there any other calls or, dis uh, or disturbances reported from here um, in the last 24 hours? I don't, we'd have to look into that. Oh, okay, so yeah. there was nothing that, but nothing that came up before this that you guys are aware of? But yeah, again, we'd have to look into that. You mean something that precluded the yeah. shooting? Don't know. Yeah, we'd have to look into that. Do you have the exact locations for where the shooting occurred and... Is it safe to say that the arrest was made at that corner? Yeah, so the shooting was in the hundred block at Dickerson, which is right behind us, uh, and the apprehension was at that intersection of Onondaga and Clinton. Uh, do you have any concerns about where the detective's car ended up? I mean, it looks like it you know, came up onto the sidewalk up near the, the Salt City Market. All these things are going to be investigated. Yeah. Is that officer on leave or anything at the moment, pending what you just talked about? Uh, no, he's uh, obviously up in CID giving us a statement right now. Nope. Yeah. And on what he saw. Yep. Well, I think so. Just lastly, Mayor, have you been in contact with anyone at the rescue mission or anyone here? Is that how you know, folks are feeling? I came on scene earlier when I first heard about it. Uh, got a briefing from uh, Deputy Chief Trudell. Uh, obviously, awful situation. I'm really grateful for SPD. They were on scene quickly, apprehended the suspect. Uh, so great work by SPD, but awful situation. And um, just uh, thinking about everybody involved right now.